Hi, this week you're going to start working with CPT codes, current procedural terminology. And so I thought it would be handy and helpful if we went over a short case study and I showed you how to abstract the details out and actually find the code using select coder because that's what we use here. Okay, you ready? Let's do it. All right, our scenario. First thing, you always want to read it all the way through. Jolie Starr, a three-year-old female, is seen in the emergency department with a diagnosis of ingestion of grandmother's hypertension pills. Dr. Madison, the emergency department physician, performs gastric intubation, aspiration, and lavage, and completes a comprehensive history and comprehensive exam with high-complexity decision-making. Okay, it's important to read it all the way through one time so you get a good mental scope of what went on during this encounter. Now, let's look at abstracting the terms or the phrases that we need to identify what the physician did for this patient during this encounter. So, we know that the patient was seen in the emergency department, and we know that the physician performed gastric intubation, aspiration, and lavage. You may know this commonly as pumping her stomach, okay? Um, but this, of course, is in medical terminology. And then we also see that the physician completed a comprehensive history, comprehensive exam, and high-complexity decision-making, which is your evaluation and management service. So let's get started. So the biggest thing that Dr. Madison did today was the gastric intubation, aspiration, and lavage. So we're going to open Select Coder, and in the search bar, now take a look at this image on your screen, okay? To the left side of the search bar, right beneath where it says Code Search, you want to make sure you click on that down arrow, make sure that you have chosen CPT. It'll save you a lot of hassle and going through stuff that has nothing to do with anything, okay? Or I should say nothing to do with what you're looking for. Okay, so you mark CPT and then you're going to type in gastric intubation because that's where we start and then click search. And look what comes up. Oh, this is very handy because there's only three codes from which you have to choose to report this procedure. Now, no matter whether there's one or three or 30, you need to read each code description carefully and take a look at what is different between these codes. Now, the first thing you'll note is they all start with the same four words, gastric intubation and aspiration. Okay, we're good there, right? But the next word is different between these three choices. The first one says therapeutic, and the second two say diagnostic, and this is an important difference. Now, you may remember from medical terminology class that therapeutic, a therapeutic procedure is um, with the intention to repair or heal or fix, okay? Whereas a diagnostic procedure is solely to gather more information so the physician can determine what's wrong with the patient, to determine what the diagnosis is. So, when you go back to the documentation, you know that the physician already knows what the problem is with the patient. She swallowed a bunch of pills, poison, okay? And so, therefore, he's got to intubate, aspirate, and lavage. So, intubate means putting a tube down her throat, into her stomach. Aspirate means to pull out and and remove stuff that's in her stomach. And lavage is the medical term for washing. 
okay, which in this particular case, the physician would do, would kind of clean out the lining of her stomach to make sure that none of the medication or as little of the medication as possible would actually get into her bloodstream through the lining of her stomach, okay? So we know that the doctor's intent with this procedure, to do this procedure, is therapeutic, to remove the poison from her system. So that takes us to the one correct code to match with the documentation. And you see the code is 43753, gastric intubation and aspiration therapeutic, necessitating physician skill, I don't know if it was your three-year-old. You would definitely want a physician to do this. Now, it says, for example, gastrointestinal hemorrhage. That does not exclude for poisoning. It's just giving you one idea of why this would happen, okay? And including lavage if performed. And we know that he did perform it because it says so in the documentation. So this is excellent, and you now have your code, and you can report 43753 with confidence that it's correct because you have all of the words and terms match the documentation, and that is what we're always looking for. Okay, so did the physician do anything else? Remember that when we went to the documentation in the first place, you and I both noticed that it also says that he completed a comprehensive history, comprehensive exam with high complexity decision making. So yes, he did do something else that's documented. This is documentation of an evaluation and management service. Okay. So we go back to the case scenario and we see that, yes, it is confirmed that this patient was cared for in the emergency department. And that is going to be, hang on, the first question you need to ask yourself and go into the documentation to determine the answer. And that is, where did this encounter take place? This is the first thing you need to know about an evaluation and management service or to report an evaluation and management service. And the documentation tells us she's seen in the emergency department. So to select coder, we will go. Okay, now in select coder, you make sure that your search bar is set to CPT, and you're going to type in emergency department. Now, that sounds weird, doesn't it? Because that's a location in the hospital and not a procedure per se, but this is how many, of, not all, but many of the evaluation and management codes are determined first by location of where the doctor is cared for the patient. So, and it doesn't hurt, right? I mean, you could type anything into select coder. It doesn't cost you anything extra. So let's see what we get. And we have a list. Okay. So you have to, have to, have to always read the descriptions of all of the codes suggested because you need to match the words and terms with the documentation. That's our job, okay? So the first one says 4084F as in Frank, and that is described as Aspen received within 24 hours before emergency department arrival or during emergency department stay. All right, so we know that that's not appropriate because there's no mention of the child being given aspirin. There's no reason or valid uh, medical necessity for the child to have aspirin. And notice how the code looks different because it's four numbers followed by a letter of the alphabet, the specific letter F as in Frank. Those codes are for performance indicators. They are not reimbursable, and it's really, it's, they are Category 2 codes from CPT. That's how they're known as Category 2 codes, okay? We do not use them for reimbursement, and we're not really covering anything with Category 2 codes 
in this class. So when you see a code ending in an F as in Frank, just move past it, okay? That's more advanced coding, and I don't want you to get confused. All right, so now we see we have five codes available to us for this emergency department visit for evaluation and management of a patient. Exactly what he did. All right, so, and this is just an example. You need to look carefully at the entire code description, okay, and look for the identity of the level of history that's documented, the level of examination that's documented, and the level of medical decision making that is documented. And when you look carefully, like if you start in, on, the de, on the description of this code, one, two, three, four, the fourth line starts with the word condition and it's underlined and it says condition and or mental status colon, a comprehensive history, a comprehensive examination, and medical decision making of high complexity. Okay, so I just want you to see where you're reading, what you're looking for. These are known as the three key components that are required to fit the criteria for this particular code, 99285. Okay, so where are we going to go to answer these questions? Back to the documentation, always. And we see that he completes, this is documented, completes a comprehensive history. So the level of, of history is documented as comprehensive and comprehensive examination exam. So the level of examination is comprehensive and high complexity decision making and medical decision making high complexity. Now, I just want to give you the heads up. In real life, when you are on the job, physicians do not write like this in their notes, okay? They will, uh, they will, and they have to, by law, document everything they collected with the history, everything they examined with the uh, examination, and other details about comorbidities and other medications and other possible diagnoses to identify the level of medical decision making. And you can, and, and as you get more experience, you will be able to interpret that, but you're just starting out. So this is baby steps with evaluation and management codes. Okay. And remember, as you do them in your work in the class, if you have a question, ask me. All right, so now we can match those three levels, comprehensive history, comprehensive examination, medical decision-making of high complexity, and that's included in this description. So that tells us that 99285 is the correct evaluation and management code to report for this encounter. So now you can report these two codes with confidence that you are correct and accurate and that you have covered everything as documented in the scenario that went on between this physician and what this physician did for this patient during this specific encounter. Okay, if you have any questions, post your questions to the General Questions Discussion Forum or email your instructor.